This is a tutorial on using CloudRF in conjunction with SAR Topo in order to model cell coverage. So in CloudRF here, we are going to create a cell using metadata we have received from a network operator. The scenario here is this is a search and rescue operation and we want to refine the search area because a modern cell, especially an LTE cell, is vast and we will take whatever information we can get from the network operator, uh, but we need to do accurate modeling in order to reduce that area. So let's start here. So first of all, we can assume we've been given the cell location. So the cell location, we're in North Wales here, is on this hill. Start off from the top then in CloudRF in your account by entering the parameters. You need to know the height. If you don't know the height, you need to make a good guess using local knowledge. Uh, so this might be about 15 meters above the ground for a cell, for example. The signal, a cell has an uplink and a downlink frequency. When we're modeling the handset, we're interested in the uplink frequency, which normally is the lower frequency of the pair. So if we're talking LT800, put in 800 megahertz for the frequency. This will vary by country. For RF power, we're not going to do the downlink power of the cell because that wouldn't be helpful. That will just show us a great big sector right across these hills. We want to know where the maximum uplink power is. And so we put in the power of the handset. Now that is 23 dBm for an LTE phone, which is 0.2 watts. So 0.2 for that and bandwidth 0.1. Just misfired there. Okay, feeder, we don't care about, and we don't even have the information because remember, we're working with limited information here. Antenna, this is uh, really important to get the antenna pattern as accurate as you can with the information provided by the operator. If you're lucky, you will get given an azimuth. So if you've got an azimuth, in this case, it's east, enter the azimuth here. If you've been given pattern details for the cell, great. Most of the time in search and rescue, you don't get the parameters. So you have to go with a best guess for the sector, which for a cell sector will be 120 degrees horizontal beam width and something less for the vertical beam width, like 45 degrees. The gain, once again, you're unlikely to get the gain from the operator. But if it is a large cell, you can make a good guess at the gain. It's going to be somewhere around the region of 19 or 20 dBi. The front to back will be higher than the gain. So let's put in uh, 30 for the front to back. So we've made quite a focused uh, sector antenna here. The reason my coverage has already appeared is because I'm in GPU mode. So as I'm changing settings here, it's actually changing the output in real time. Right now for our missing person, they are equipped with a phone, which is near to the ground. So let's assume it's in their pocket. So the height is one meter off the ground. The receive gain for a phone is pretty low. Uh, so set this to zero. Now the measured units, when you receive, if you receive power readings from the network operator, they're going to be either RSSI received power or RSRP which is reference signal received power, which considers uh, the bandwidth and the noise. So we work on the assumption here that we have RSRP values. And if it's RSRP, the threshold for that is minus 120 dBm. Any lower than this and a handset cannot connect. The model, if you're doing LT800, we recommend the Eggly model with Bullington diffraction. Average context and 50% reliability. Environment, if you're up in the hills, you need a DTM model, clearly. Land cover on, so we're modeling the effect of trees because forests will make a difference to 800 megahertz frequencies. Land cover on, buildings on. We're not doing my obstacles and the noise floor uh, was set automatically. But if you've got local data, well, you can go ahead and update that, for example. And finally, the output, 
We're talking about an LT800 cell here. They're normally pretty large. In California, these can go out to 100 kilometers. But we're also looking at what the handset is capable of. And in this case, uh, the handset um, European power limits here. Um, we're not on a, on a really big hill, but it is a notable hill. So we're setting our radius at 20 kilometers. The geometry of, of the network will vary by country and region, but in this case, it's fair to say there's, there's cells at least every 20 kilometers. And the resolution, 20 meters as well. Right, the color key that we're using here, uh, we've created a custom color key called RSRP80, where the peak is minus 80 dBm, and uh, the limit is minus 120, which is the purple. This is a really good dynamic range uh, for these sorts of values. If your missing person has a RSRP value of minus 80, then the search won't take long because they will be right by the cell. But normally, their value will be right on the threshold. Wherever the last ping was of the phone, it will be down round about minus 115 dBm, in which case they could be all the way out here or further. So that is our um, uplink for the cell. Uh, we're happy with that. That gives us a much reduced search area, um, assuming we've got information. The next challenge is how do we get that into SAR topo? So what we do is we need to download it. So we can go and fetch this layer from our archive. Click my archive at the top here, check the box next to the layer that you created, and then you need to download the GeoTIFF image in Mercator projection. There's two GeoTIFFs here. One is in WGS84 projection. This would be appropriate for a globe like Google Earth. But SAR Topo uses this projection. So click that one there and download the Mercator projection GeoTIFF. That's what we need for SAR Topo. Okay, moving over to SAR Topo. Uh, this isn't a SAR Topo lesson, and I am not a SAR Topo expert, uh, but I know how to add a GeoTIFF layer. So what we do, we have to create a map first of all. You can only add a map sheet, which is the layer name that we need down here, if you've already created a map. So we've got a map here with a URL. I click Add. I go down to Map Sheet. And now I'm going to browse and select uh, the layer that I just created. So I've selected that and I'm clicking Add. You will then receive a dialog that tells you it's queued for rendering. What's happening here is SAR Topo has uploaded the GeoTIFF. It wasn't very big, it wasn't even half a megabyte. And it's cutting up that very large image into small tiles. With that tile pyramid, you can then zoom into the map and it gives you a much smoother interactive map. Now, if you remember, we use 20 meter resolution in Cloud RF. So that means we can zoom right in uh, down to 20 meter squares once this layer is loaded in SAR Topo, which makes a very powerful and useful search tool when combined with all the other layers. Now, whilst we're waiting, uh, what we're doing here is just one, one cell or one sector of one cell even. But clearly this can be automated. So if you've received a spreadsheet of cells, what you can do back on Cloud RF is put that into the automatic processing format and load it into the interface and process that entire spreadsheet in one go. We have a video on how to process a spreadsheet on the channel. Okay, we're done. The layer's saved to the account and it's here. It's a, a map sheet and I can click map sheet there and there's our LTE cell. So instantly recognizable. I can go ahead and edit that and I can give it a name and I can give it a LTE 800 demo. Save that to my account and that's saved. Now this layer is interactive so as I zoom in it's actually tiling lots of small images not just one big image and that means that if I was looking uh, for demonstration purposes for a cyclist who was on the blue cycle route here and we had a weak uh, ping on a phone uh, we could interpret the coverage layer against the cycle layer which we have here and get, get a good idea for a start point for our search. Okay, so this is a brief demo of loading 
and preparing a cell site and loading it into SAR Topo.